Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a sci-fi thriller film, The Ghost Maker. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with footage of two young adults filming their friend lying inside a casket with some kind of mechanical contraption. A note from the director appears, informing the viewers that the three young adults' identities remain unknown to this day. The scene then changes to a college student named Kyle, walking his girlfriend, Julie, to her car. As she gets in, Julie offers her credit card for Kyle if he needs money, which Kyle kindly rejects as he can handle his financial problems. Julie drives away with a smile on her face, and Kyle returns to his place and spends hours writing notes and studying for school. Suddenly, a black figure catches his attention after it passes by his door. Kyle checks it out and almost craps himself when only a man shows up. The man works for a drug mule to whom Kyle owes money. The henchman says the boss wants his money back or else he will go to his girlfriend's house. After threatening and stressing Kyle even more, the henchman leaves immediately. Kyle goes to work first thing in the morning. He arrives at an old woman's house to clean and dispose of some stuff. While working, Kyle finds an antique coffin, fascinating with its distinct features. Kyle wants to sell it, but the old woman cuts him off and firmly instructs him that he must watch the workers there bury the casket once he dumps it into the landfill. Although confused and creeped out by the old woman, Kyle remains silent until he finishes the job. However, Kyle brings the coffin to his place, takes some flash photographs, and uploads them to the internet, excited that someone will pay for its antiqueness. After that, he opens the casket and begins vacuuming it, removing all the dust and leaves inside. Unexpectedly, Kyle discovers something underneath the leather headrest, a mechanical contraption. Kyle immediately gets his wheelchair roommate to check out the coffin. They find the key engraved with a man's name and a year, Von Tristan, 1952. They also see where the key goes quickly after, and a tune plays as they put it into it. The casket is one giant music box because the tune, ending after a minute, confuses them. Roommate disregards it and returns to his room, while Kyle is still fascinated by what he has found. The following day, Kyle ditches his classes and goes to his nerdy friend, Platt. It turns out Kyle has informed Platt of everything about the antique casket, so he can do some research. Platt shows him a picture of a man named Von Tristan, born in 1412, and a builder of torture devices. It turns out, this ancient man is the evil version of Leonardo da Vinci. People named him Devil's Craftsman because of his work, one of which is the antique casket, called the Eidolon Machina. Von Tristan was fascinated with death and the worlds beyond, so he spent years making a mechanical coffin that allowed him to safely experience the sensation of death. Platt tells Kyle that collectors will pay thousands or even millions of dollars for the mechanical casket as it is truly one of a kind. Kyle leaves without a word after hearing those. Kyle returns home with the archive book Platt had shown him and shows it to his roommate. It reveals that Von Tristan was accused of sorcery and burned at stake because of his work. The people only found sketches of the coffin, but the actual prototype was never found. Kyle and roommate decide to test if the casket they have is indeed the prototype using roommate's goldfish. Kyle twists the key into the hole, and little lightning bolts hit the goldfish as the tune plays. Roommate begins to feel sad as his goldfish floats in the water, unalive, when suddenly it kicks back into life after the tune ends playing. The guys are beyond fascinated by the discovery. Later that day, Julie stops by at their place, and while in the bathtub with Kyle, Roommate knocks on the door, interrupting their smelly moment. Roommate tells Kyle with a loud voice that the gas company has called, warning them to pay the bill, which Kyle disregards. Later, Platt arrives at their place, excited to check out the mechanical coffin. However, Platt's excitement turns into worry as Kyle and Roommate want to test the coffin again. Although he disagrees, Platt turns the key while Roommate films Kyle lying in the casket. In a matter of seconds, Kyle loses consciousness, worrying both Platt and Roommate when they realize that he's not breathing. Unbeknownst to them, Kyle's astral projection is in the room, and Kyle himself cannot believe what the coffin just did to him. Kyle returns to life as the music ends. Kyle seems in a daze as Platt helps him get out of the casket, but his lips form into a smile as he realizes that Von Tristan's prototype ghost machine is indeed in their possession. Although uncertain, Platt tries the casket for himself as he's cursed with curiosity. Like Kyle, Platt's astral projection gets out of his body and wanders the street. However, his experience with it is not so good until the time before he returns to life. A train passes through his body. With that quick experience, Platt explains that the casket lets them approach the threshold of death without actually crossing to the other side. Despite that, the wheelchair roommate goes in next with their help, and he's beyond shocked after seeing his astral projection standing straight. Suddenly, Julie arrives and calls out for Kyle, leaving Platt with an unconscious roommate. 
Julie angrily showed Kyle a billing statement from her bank, informing that Kyle has been secretly using her credit card for a month. As they argue, roommate watches them. Julie kicks Platt's scooter before storming into her car, as Kyle refuses to explain himself. As Kyle returns inside, roommate tries to wipe Julie's tears when the music ends. As he returns to life, roommate comments on Kyle stealing Julie's credit card, and tells Platt to check out his scooter. After testing the casket for themselves, Platt warns them to keep it a secret, and no more use it until he does thorough research about it. Suddenly, roommate stands on his legs for only a few seconds, before falling onto the ground. Platt and Kyle immediately put him back in his wheelchair. Roommate insists that he begins to feel his legs, but his fall proves him wrong. Later that night, as Platt arrives at his apartment building, he finds a man covered with clothes, lying in front of the front door. Platt tries to wake him up, but the man remains unmoved, so Platt ignores him and unlocks the doors. However, the man reveals his ghostly state with only his eyes being seen, which are the machine's color in the antique casket. Platt feels his presence and immediately gets inside. The ghostly man disappears as another tenant appears. On the other hand, while Kyle cleans himself, the same ghostly man shows himself in front of the mirror for a second, before vanishing into thin air. Kyle dismisses it, thinking it's his imagination. He talks to Julie on his computer, but Julie initiates a two-week break, to which Kyle agrees as he knows he's at fault. Stressed out, Kyle resorts to the only way he knows. He then uses the casket and wanders the street, ending up near a convenience store. The owner locks his store and puts the register money in his vault and his pistol. He puts the number lock before leaving the store, unaware that Kyle has been watching him the whole time. As soon as he returns to life, Kyle puts on a hoodie, goes to the convenience store, and steals the owner's money and pistol, without breaking any alarm. Meanwhile, roommate uses the casket after seeing Kyle leave, and he goes to Julie's apartment to creep on her. The following day, while researching the ghost machine, Platt's nose begins to bleed. Platt wipes it off and calls Kyle, informing him about some discovery he made about the music. It turns out, the music playing whenever they use the casket is diabolically banned by the medieval church. Platt wants to record it, so he can study it more deeply. As the sun goes down, Platt arrives at their house and asks Kyle and roommate if they haven't had problems after using the coffin last night. The guys answer no, so Platt shares about the ghostly man he saw, but Kyle dismisses it and gets into the coffin, shoving Platt away. Roommate is ready with his camera as Kyle uses the casket for the second time. Kyle's astral projection is at the drug mule van, where he sees a junkie anxiously waiting for the drug mule to finish up sexually abusing his girlfriend. After a while, the drug mule comes out of the room with the poor woman behind him, disheveled and used. The drug mule henchman goes out to take the drugs as instructed by the drug mule, and Kyle follows him to the hiding spot, smirking. As he returns to life, Kyle simply says he's been to the gates of heaven. Kyle takes the camera from roommate to film, when Platt points out roommate's goldfish floating and dead. Although they know something is wrong with the fish's death, they continue using the casket. Roommate uses it next, and goes to Julie's boxing gym to creep on her and her hormones again. The numerous naked bodies of women don't catch roommate's attention as he passes by them in the shower. He goes straight to Julie, follows her everywhere, and eavesdrops on her conversations. Roommate's mood changes as he hears Julie talking to Kyle on the phone for their next meetup. This pisses roommate that he punches the locker and surprisingly causes it to move. After that, he returns to life and lies about going to the movie theater. However, Kyle points out roommate's boner, pissing off roommate. He gets out of the casket with their help and leaves the room after. Late that night, while studying the recorded music from the casket in his apartment, Platt discovers something. The following day, Julie meets Kyle at coffee shop, where Kyle shows her a billing statement, indicating that he had paid off all the debt on Julie's credit card. However, this worries Julie even more, as she doesn't know where he got the money. Because of this, Kyle snaps at her, but Platt interrupts them with a phone call. Platt believes something else in the coffin, that channels the sound directly into their heads, presumably a needle. He explains that they are not experiencing a near-death experience when they use the casket, but instead get their brains dead for a few moments. This means they are slowly killing themselves multiple times, using the ghost machine. Platt tells Kyle that he will be at their place by 7 in the evening, and ends the phone call. As Kyle turns around, he finds the table empty, and Julie going into her car after writing on the billing statement that Kyle needs help. Kyle leaves the shop and goes after Julie, who drives away without a goodbye. Pissed off, Kyle gets into his car and steals the drugs from the drug mule's hideout before going home. Not long after, the drug mule and his henchmen discover that the drugs are nowhere to be found, angering the drug mule as their supplier would mess them up. Meanwhile, Platt discovers a needle mark below his head when he feels something with him. The ghostly man shows himself, prompting Platt to run out of his apartment to escape. However, as he runs downstairs, Platt trips and falls to his death. 
Later that night, Kyle and roommate wait for Platt to show up for about an hour. Suddenly, roommate's nose bleeds, which he dismisses and ignores, as he and Kyle will use the ghost machine again. Kyle goes in first. This time, Kyle heads to the drug mule's van, where he sees the drug mule mixing drugs to replace the stolen ones. Despite being poisonous, the drug mule still sells them to a junkie, who later takes the poison and suffers great pain. Kyle can only watch as the junkie tries to endure the pain. Kyle runs to the van to stop the drug mule and his henchman, but he only sees the plate number, before returning to life. As he does so, Kyle finds himself alone in the apartment, but he dismisses that and goes to the junkie's place, only to find him bathing in his own blood. Guilty and angered, Kyle writes the drug mule's van's plate number with the junkie's blood on the floor. Meanwhile, roommate goes to Julie's place and gives her the antique box containing Kyle's drug paraphernalia. Roommate then confesses his love to Julie and reveals that he has been in love with her since high school. He only chose Kyle to be his roommate so he could be with Julie. Roommate then stands up from his wheelchair, revealing that he can now walk alone. However, Julie pushes him away, so roommate storms off. Simultaneously, Kyle begins hallucinating, seeing himself losing his teeth and the ghostly man on his front lawn. He dismisses that and goes out to talk to the police officer, who informs him about Platt's devastating death. The officers in charge question him if he knows something about Platt's death. Platt left an email on his computer addressed to Kyle, indicating that they must destroy the casket. Kyle denies such a thing and returns to their place to destroy the coffin when roommate stops him. Kyle cannot hide his shock when he sees roommate standing before him, indicating that the coffin can even heal his disability. Roommate releases his anger and jealousy towards Kyle, punching Kyle and leading to his unconsciousness. Roommate uses the casket and goes to Julie's again. He drugs her drink. He then locks the door before messing up her place. Julie tries to call for help, but to no avail. Within minutes, she unwillingly loses consciousness. By this time, Kyle wakes up and looks for roommate, only to find roommate's laptop full of candid photos of Julie. Kyle immediately calls Julie, who answers it, although weakened. With her remaining strength, Julie informs him about roommate's intention before losing consciousness again. Kyle takes the pistol he stole before and leaves to come after roommate. Roommate returns to life, and it turns out he has taken the casket to the car trunk. He puts Julie's unconscious body into the coffin and drives away. Shortly after, Kyle arrives at Julie's place, only to find it empty as he's too late. Kyle sees Julie's gym bag and realizes where roommate is taking her. Julie wakes up tied to a piece of gym equipment, with roommate obsessively glorifying the ghost machine. Kyle arrives at the gym shortly after and looks for them. Upon hearing Kyle's voice calling out to Julie, roommate hides the casket before using it again. Roommate shows himself to Kyle and begins attacking him before locking Kyle in a room. Although she cannot see roommate, Julie shivers in fear as she hears his voice. But roommate starts hurting her, causing her to scream. Kyle finds a way out through the vent and accidentally runs into the ghostly man. Kyle goes through him as he's not afraid of death at all. As the ghostly man vanishes, Kyle accidentally finds the casket on the rooftop and removes roommate from it. He then puts gas all over it to destroy it, when roommate suddenly stops him from putting it into a fire. The two struggle with their muscles. Kyle puts the coffin into a fire by shooting it with a pistol. This enrages roommate even more, so he carries Kyle to the edge and stomps on his hands so he can fall to his death. However, Julie breaks free and finds them. Julie begins shooting roommate. This causes roommate to lose his attention to Kyle. Kyle pushes himself up and punches roommate, causing him to lose his balance and fall to his death. They then see roommate's soul getting out of his body and celebrating when the ghostly man, presumably death himself, shows up. Death takes roommate's soul before vanishing, leaving Kyle with two dead friends and a traumatized girlfriend. As the morning comes up, Kyle drives with Julie by his side. He successfully gets the drug mule and his henchmen arrested, before stopping at the old woman's house. Kyle hands her the casket's remains, saying he should have destroyed it just as she advised him. However, the old woman from earlier reveals herself as a soul, saying she can finally leave the place. This indicates that death trapped her in that house, until she could find someone to pass the antique coffin to. The film ends with the old woman informing Kyle that he will see death for the rest of his life, before she vanishes from her rocking chair, finally free. This Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.